Some roller coasters have seat belts, little pieces of fabric that keep you strapped into the ride. Other roller coasters, ones that seemingly look very similar, don't have seat belts. In fact, Diamondback at Kings Island in the United States, a roller coaster famous for its airtime hills, has seat belts. The exact same type of ride, Shambhala at Port Aventura World in Spain, doesn't have seat belts. Why? Why do some roller coasters feature seat belts whilst others don't? What do they actually do? And ultimately, should all roller coasters feature these belts? Just as roller coasters come in a variety of shapes and sizes, roller coaster seat belts do too. You'll often find them either in the form of a plane style latch seat belt, a car style button seat belt, or a space looking click fix seat belt. These may be placed directly across the laps of riders, or they might extend from the seat to be connected to the roller coaster's main restraint. The exact style of the seat belt might be due to a technical reason for that ride, or it might purely be the style the manufacturer of that ride opts to go with. Nevertheless, that doesn't answer our question. Why can I only find seat belts on some roller coasters? In a nutshell, seat belts are often added to roller coasters to increase their level of safety. Though, this isn't always the case and heavily depends on the design of the ride itself. For example, some smaller and more tame roller coasters use a seatbelt placed across the laps of riders as the main form of restraint. Attractions like Tower of Terror and Soarin' at Walt Disney World in Florida use seatbelts to secure guests to the ride vehicle. Whilst some roller coasters only feature seatbelts as the main form of restraint too, such as flying turns at Knobles. With all of these attractions, a seatbelt paired with the tame nature of the ride, or the design of the ride vehicle itself, is enough to keep guests safe. Though, for the majority of larger and more intimidating roller coasters, seatbelts serve a slightly different purpose. They act as a form of redundancy. Thrilling roller coasters feature more rigid restraints than just a seatbelt, often in the form of an over-the-shoulder harness or lap bar that rests over guests' laps. These act as the primary form of the restraint for the ride, but a roller coaster may feature a seatbelt as an additional safety measure alongside the primary restraint. This means that if the main restraint were to fail, which is an incredibly unlikely event, the seatbelt would either hold the restraint down or keep guests secured to the ride vehicle. However, modern roller coasters are designed with multiple redundancies built into the primary restraint itself. Often, this is in the form of duplicate restraint systems, meaning two mechanisms hold the primary over-the-shoulder harness or lap bar in place. In the extremely unlikely event one of these systems were to fail, the other one would keep guests secure. As a result, in many cases, seatbelts act as an alternative redundancy system. In some cases, seatbelts have a different purpose. They ensure people are safe to ride the roller coaster. Seatbelts that attach directly from the ride seat to the primary restraint may act as a minimum position indicator, meaning that if the seatbelt cannot be buckled fully, it's not safe for the individual to ride. Therefore, the seatbelt becomes a visual safety indicator, ensuring all guests are correctly secured by their restraint. This is the case at Nemesis at Alton Towers in the UK, as well as many other similar inverted roller coasters around the world too. Finally, in many other cases, seatbelts on roller coasters serve no real purpose, but exist instead for the comfort of riders. Some guests feel safer with a seatbelt to secure them, compared to not having one at all. In these cases, seatbelts provide peace of mind while adding minimal safety value to the ride itself. Helix, a roller coaster at Lietzeberg in Sweden, operated without seatbelts for multiple years. However, guest feedback determined that many wished the ride had seatbelts, so they were added retrospectively. In this case, adding seatbelts didn't make the ride safer, as it can operate both with or without them. Furthermore, some parks around the world choose to add seatbelts to their attractions to reduce insurance costs. Some insurance providers see the addition of seatbelts as beneficial regardless of whether the manufacturer of the ride requires them. Now that we know why some roller coasters have seatbelts, let's further understand why some rides simply don't have seatbelts. As mentioned earlier, the intensity or thrill level of an attraction often dictates the type of restraint required to keep guests safe. Some tame rides, like log flumes, or even train rides, don't have any form of restraint, not even seatbelts. Though, as rides become larger and scarier, the level of safety required drastically increases. In fact, many big roller coasters around the world have to meet strict safety standards. These can be set by a range of authorities, 
some of which include the TUV, the Technical Inspection Association, based in Germany, and the ASTM, the American Society for Testing of Materials, based in, well, the United States of America. The ASTM in particular has set out strict classifications which place roller coaster restraints into one of five classes. Each class is more rigorous and secure than the last. Rides like log flumes have class 1 restraints, i.e. no restraints at all, whilst large scale roller coasters, ones which subject guests to a range of heavy g-forces, have class 5 restraints. Class 5 restraints are required to comply with a list of safety measures including automatic locking, can only be unlocked by a ride operator, external indication the restraint is locked, redundancy of the locking device, and two restraints or one failsafe restraint. The two highlighted measures are particularly important, especially when evaluating the need for seatbelts. As we've already discussed, the inclusion of seatbelts provides a clear external indication of whether the restraint is closed correctly and acts as a second restraint alongside the primary over-the-shoulder harness or lap bar. However, a seatbelt isn't the only way a ride can satisfy these safety requirements. Today, many roller coasters feature small lights on their ride vehicles located next to or near the train's restraint systems. Once the restraint has been pulled down and is secure, the light turns green, indicating to the ride operator that it has closed correctly. An example of this can be found on Flucht von Novgorod at Hansa Park in Germany. Instead of having two separate restraints, many modern roller coasters instead feature a single failsafe restraint. As mentioned earlier, these types of restraints are failsafe because they have two or more parallel restraint systems. This means that the over-the-shoulder harness or lap bar is connected to and held in place by two identical restraint systems. If one of these were to fail, which is an extremely unlikely event, the restraint would be held in place by the other. As a result, a secondary restraint, such as a seatbelt, is no longer required to keep guests safe. However, as we've learned before, some roller coasters that have fail-safe restraint systems may also have seatbelts for other reasons not specifically related to safety. So there you go, now you know why some roller coasters have seatbelts and others don't. It depends on a whole host of factors, some safety related and others not so safety related. Now you won't be surprised to see two roller coasters, one with belts and one without, when visiting a theme park. Take Universal's Islands of Adventure for example. The Incredible Hulk features over-the-shoulder restraints with seat belts, whilst Velocicoaster, another roller coaster in the same park, features lap bar restraints without seat belts. Is one more safe than the other? No. They simply use different safety measures to keep guests secure. If you'd like to learn more about how roller coaster restraints work, or even some of the systems in place to keep roller coasters safe for visitors of theme parks, click on the videos on screen. Anyway, thank you for watching, and we'll see you all next time.